so the next question here is what what should people responsible for the extended workforce know about HI? And I know Sarah, you've got plenty to say here, but I want to ask Franz to kick this mm -hmm. one off. Yeah. Um, well, I, to some extent, and and this is not intended to be provocative, but you know, to some extent, don't worry about it, right? And, and the and the the reason I say that is very few companies out there are capable of building their own AI from like an, you know, and, I, and by AI, I'm thinking this is more generative AI, right? Mm -hmm. You know, most companies are not going to be deploying on their own, their own generative LLMs, you know, and kind of doing bespoke versions, right? Especially in think inside like a, you know, a, a procurement for extended workforce or HR or whatever that looks like, right? So most of the adoption of generative AI for organizations is going to come when it gets embedded as a feature inside of platforms, right? Whatever your case management tool is, whatever your vendor management system is, whatever your HCM is, you know, it's getting plugged in by those companies into as a feature set, you know, so like HCMs, they're, they're absolutely developing generative AI to figure out and do job descriptions, right? You know, give them a couple of prompts, it'll do the job description. And so as a result, from, from our viewpoint, you don't have to worry about, do I need to go make it, right? You know, do I have to build it? What does that look like? The bigger question, however, is if you are turning it on, what, you know, because all most of these programs are all kind of an opt-in that you have to have to say, yes, we are going to be doing it. It's more of monitoring how are we using it, kind of piece number one. Are we okay with the use cases? Because the other piece to keep in mind is generative AI still has a pretty heavy shroud of, you know, regulatory review. You know, I mean, just think, you know, in the finance world, you know, the Office of the Comptroller you know, Comptrol and Currency, they they still haven't, you know, weighed in on generative AI. EEOC has said, listen, you know, it, we're not sure, we're not going to give you an answer, but we're still going to hold you accountable that you can't have adverse impact, right? So as a result, know that when you turn on generative AI, you know, you're absorbing the potential risk, right? Now, it's no different than if you're using regular AI or you have individuals making those decisions. The risk point's the same, but you need to be thinking about what does it look like? And then the second is, you know, finding out what those use cases are that add value and really driving governance around it and saying, okay, how do we encourage adoption? You know, if, if you're a company thinks, you know, that, you know, a certain use case is fantastic, then that's the one we would use. I think that's probably the biggest thing from an extended workforce of, you know, aside from most companies are going to need AI talent, in which case that's an entirely different conversation of, you know, you need to make sure you've got, you know, an MSP and agencies behind the scenes that can supply AI talent because that, that one's not stopping. Uh, let me pause. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. And particularly what I like is the, is the use cases and the risk. So if you think about creating a job description, you know, you you can you can run a few prompts and create a job description. Someone obviously will review the job description before it gets up. If there's a hallucination in the job description, the risk is relatively low. If you're using AI for a policy interpretation, let's say you have it as an interface with one of your employees who's asking about uh, a, a particular policy, well, the risk could be a little bit different because there may be uh, a hallucination based on the mathematics of how the large language model works versus um, you know, versus a, a correct interpretation of the policy. So I like the notion of risk cases. And we haven't even started talking about selection, which uh, is fraught with risk. And even there are states, you know, I think New York is the leading leading the way with, you have to have an audit once a year, or once every two years, I think, uh, of your mm -hmm. AI systems to make sure it's not biased. Sarah, it sounds like you're aware of this one. Yeah. Um, from my you know, position um, and, you know, in the world of extended workforce, um, I think AI can be used um, in many ways, but in two ways in particular. One, automation. So AI can be used in place of the word automation. So for example, if you can use AI to um, automate the analysis of contracts to get visibility and insights to help you better manage that category spend, it can have a huge impact. Um, 15 years ago, I was managing extended workforce category for um, an uh, organization. And I was tasked with analyze these 750 labor contracts to, to understand where do we have staff AUG hidden within these statements of work. It took me six to nine months to do that. Um, you know, it was a person reading through contracts. Now, replace that activity with AI and machine learning, 
and now take that six to nine month project and narrow it down to a day. Um, we've just now saved, you know, 95% of the effort um, to do something like that based on using um, automation or AI. So um, I think that's one piece that as um, people responsible for extended workforce sh should know. Um, and then also um, AI can be used to provide better precision and accuracy in things like benchmarks. So using AI has allowed our industry to mature significantly. Um, using AI has allowed um, us to provide precise real-time insights in things as granular as what are companies paying for a um, specific skill like Java developer sourced through an agency competitively bid in Sacramento, California with five to, years, eight, five to eight years experience, right? We've been able to get to that precision due to using AI. So that said, I'd say lean into it. Using AI can have a significant impact on efficiency, quality, um, and then also cost, cost as well.